The economy is in such a weird place right now that 31% of millionaires now categorize themselves as being middle class. Reading from the CNBC report, they write, quote, between persistent inflation, high interest rates, and geopolitical and economic uncertainty, fewer Americans, including millionaires, feel confident about their financial standing. Many people feel squeezed between higher prices and lower asset prices, said Kim Maez, a certified financial planner and private wealth advisor at Ameriprise. While a necessary part of the ec economic cycle, it's also uncomfortable. Even doctors, lawyers, and other highly paid professionals, also referred to as the regular rich, who benefit from stable jobs, home ownership, and a well-padded retirement savings account, so they don't feel well off at all. Some even said they feel poor, according to a separate survey conducted by Bloomberg. Of those making more than $175,000 a year, or roughly the top 10% of tax filers, one quarter said they were either very poor or poor or getting by but things are tight. Even a share of those making more than $500,000 and $1 million said the, sh the same. Despite their high net worth, just 44% of all millionaires felt very comfortable. Another report by Edelman Financial Engines found, end quote. Dang, what does that mean for the rest of us that literal millionaires are feeling the squeeze? The one caveat I'd throw in there is that many well-off people are more sensitive to liberal piety, so part of the self-assessment might be them trying to identify with a more oppressed class as opposed to an oppressor class as their ideology dictates. It actually kind of reminds me of that interview with former Spice Girls Victoria Beckham pretending to have been Rainey's working class while her soccer star husband tells her to just be honest. Take a listen. We're very working, working class. Be honest. I, I am being be honest. honest. I am being what honest. What did your dad drive you to school in? So my dad. Did, no, one answer. My dad. What well, car was it? It's not a simple answer what because. What car? What did you get your dad to drive? It you depends. To school in? No, 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 no. Okay, what in car? the eighties, my dad had a Rolls Royce. Thank you. But even with that being said, money is tight for everyone these days. Now, aside from the effects of our economy that we have in common with Spanish civilians, also take a look at what is happening in New York under Governor Kathy Hochul. Also, we're very focused on the data we're collecting from surveillance efforts, what's being said on social media platforms. And we have launched an effort to be able to counter some of the negativity and reach out to people when we see hate speech being spoken about on, on online platforms. Our media analysis, our social media analysis unit has ramped up its monitoring of sites to catch incitement to violence, direct threats to others. And all this is in response to our desire, our strong commitment to ensure that not only do New Yorkers be safe, but they also feel safe. So that's Big Brother, or, or I guess Big Sister for you. Watches every move you make and makes you poorer for it. So Hochul and her team are going to monitor what you put on social media to keep us all safe, they assure us. Like Ronald Reagan said, I'm from the government and I'm here to help the nine most terrifying words of the English language. Joining us now to discuss is Josie Glayback, the host of Spaces with Josie and a Timcast News contributor. Josie, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me, Kara. Okay, so what do you make of what Hochul is doing right now in New York? I know on social media you said it's, it's very similar to what we saw with the Patriot Act, but talk to us about what you're seeing with this. So hate speech is free speech. Uh, the Supreme Court's ruled this several times now. It's, it's never, never changed. So I would imagine that this could eventually get struck down, but a lot of times uh, the states are able to do some damage before it makes its way to SCOTUS. So... I think they know what they're doing. I think they know it's unconstitutional, but they're going to see what they can get away with as long as they can. And it does remind me of, I think it was last year, right, when the Supreme Court struck down some of their, their, their gun laws, and then they came back. It was the Bruin case. And then remember, New York said, okay, well, then we're going to make these other gun laws, basically testing the limits of what the Supreme Court ruling was. So we've seen this before. You're exactly right. And as I was joking about earlier, Big Brother monitoring everything you say and do, and sometimes even what you think inside the comfort of your own brain cells. At the same time, he makes you poor. He takes everything from you so that you need him more. It's a very abusive relationship uh, with this Orwellian Big Brother. The, the government that we have. 